Hey guys, it's MKX Jump here, and in today's video, we're going to be checking out this week's event, which is Wishing Fountain, Gem Boxes, and Campaign Loot Drop. So let's go check out today's video. It seems that DH Games, the makers of Idle Heroes, have had to make some room for more events because they've added Imp's Adventure and Ormus Workshop. In doing so, they've combined events that normally wouldn't go together together to make bigger events across the quieter weeks. Now, a quieter week for me would be a week that doesn't have profit orbs or heroic summons, such as this week. And therefore, this week, guys, we see Campaign Loot Drop plus Wishing Fountain and Gem Boxes together, which is a nice combination of events, which is much larger than we'd seen months and months ago in the original Idle Heroes event calendar. Rather than just getting a super wishing coin because it's the wishing fountain event or a hundred of the loot drop currency, we actually get both, which is really nice for logging in. If we take a look at this week's events, you'll also see the Almost Workshop has carried over from last week. Now, I touched on this in the previous event review video, so if you want to go see my thoughts on Almost Workshop, you can go find that by clicking the link above. But to summarize, we can basically make Antlers Cane, Kiss of Ghost, Candy Bar, and Rui Scepter better than they already are by combining them with copies of themselves. So if this is something you're interested in and you have multiple copies of these lying around spare, you can do that through the Ormus Workshop. If you don't have multiple copies, however, you could potentially, if you wanted to, buy a lucky candy bar from the Deep Sea Treasure, which is this week's campaign loot drop event. Would I encourage this? Mm, I'm not too sure. First off, you already need a lucky candy bar to make this viable. And also, guys, if we consider how many of these things we're going to get throughout the week, it's only going to be around 2400. So if you do want to get the lucky candy bar and you're not going to buy them by using your exchange crystals, you're going to have to use your money by spending $99 to get the top package, and you're going to need to do that twice. So it'll be $199 just to get Lucky Candy Bar, which you should probably only be even thinking about getting if you've already got one and you want to upgrade it. Lucky Candy Bar is not a good artifact in its normal form. It only gives you stun immunity, and there's hardly any heroes in the meta right now that can stun. So it just means that this artifact only gives you attack and HP, and it's not that great. I'd rather use something else on my heroes, and therefore I do not want you to use Candy Bar. However, if you have the upgraded form it can give you control immunity and potentially save you against a sherlock which could be something you're after but again is it worth 200 dollars i don't think so so i think it's a hard pass from me spending your money to get a candy bar Better things to get from this event would be Ada, if you haven't already got an E5 Ada. There's Ithaqua here, which you can either get to improve your Ithaqua that you may be building for PvE, or to potentially exchange for the new hero if they continue the Palace of Exchange event, which we saw not too long ago when Sherlock was released. As well, there's someone like Penny, who is a fantastic hero for early game players, one of the best heroes you can build as your first E5, because our progress in Seal Land and PvE, Aspen Dungeon, etc. is really, really good for early players. And then there's a skin here, which you probably want to ignore for Valkyrie. So basically, if you don't plan on getting Penny or Ithaqua or any of the heroes here, I would encourage you guys to get your hands on Prophet Orbs or Heroic Scrolls, whichever you don't really have enough for for Anniversary, because when the Anniversary event comes, it's going to require us to use a load of Scrolls and a load of Prophet Orbs. So it's arguably best to grab them from this event so that you can hoard up and have as many as possible. On the topic of Profit Orbs, we have Wishing Fountain, which is everyone's monthly opportunity to grab a few Profit Orbs. The best way to do this is to spin and spin and spin, grab your Wishing Coins, and spend them away to get your hands on Profit Orbs every time. So if we're doing 50, you'll get two, another two for 100, another two for 200, and finally you'll get another two, five Relics, and a Corpse Demon this week for 300 spins. The most efficient way to do this is by clicking the 10 times button down here because it will only use 8 coins but will give you the opportunity to get 10 spins. And when this goes through you get your hands on whatever rewards are available. And you'll see there are different varying quantities of rewards so whichever one you see and go you know what I want loads of them if you see for example 150 of the dust or maybe 375k gold that might be something you want to go yeah I'm going to spin loads on this one. It would be my personal encouragement to say chase four stars and once you've got a four star hero then refresh and then spin again only refresh when it's free as well don't go wasting your gems on this because gems are going to be very very important for anniversary so save your gems 
On the topic of saving gems, though, we do have the gem box event, which is potentially a drain on your resources. Now, I encourage to everybody buy the Heroic Scrolls box because it's a really cheap way to get Heroic Scrolls. 100 gems for a Heroic Scroll is a bargain. Also, we have four profit orbs for 150 gems. Again, this is a discounted price and very affordable. It's basically four for the price of three, so I definitely grab this. But the other chests don't really give me much to get excited about. The 2500 chest gets you skin shards and and monster parts, not really something that's jumping out to me as worth 2,500 gems. For 4,000 gems, you get an elite hero shard, which is always a bit of a risky thing because you could just end up getting a crappy hero, so I don't like taking that risk. And finally, for 6,000 gems, we get guild coins and a potential orange exclusive artifact. Now, this could be an Orb of Annihilation or the Speed Boots for Fortress. Potentially, it's a Withered Armor for your Horus. But there are so many artifacts this could be that aren't very good. So is it worth 6,000 gems? Well, it all depends on how you value guild coins. Newer players may find guild coins invaluable for improving your guild tech progress. But for those of us that already have established guild techs, maybe guild coins aren't worth the gems that we want to save for anniversary. So this is actually the first time I'm going to say this top package might not be worth it because saving for anniversary is so important and there could be some exclusive stuff that gets you some fantastic rewards if you use your gems. Now we saw something similar to this last week where you could buy things with gems to get a copy of Ithaca for example or a load of profit orbs which seemed like a really valuable purchase. So I would say if you definitely are short on gems please do not buy this top box because you want to make sure that you have as many opportunities to get the best rewards from anniversary as possible. So save up some gems guys to make sure that you can do that. The final thing I want to mention is Lonely Traveler is ending in a few hours, guys, okay? So make sure you cash in on your Lonely Traveler. Do not miss the opportunity to get your hands on dummies or on whatever five-star shards are available because if you leave anything left over, the only thing you'll be able to do is turn it into gold. And I'd recommend getting five-star heroes because they are the most valuable resource in the game. So grab yourself some shards, grab whatever rewards you can, and make sure that you do because you will kick yourself if you have any stuff left over. So, to summarize, Anniversary is fast approaching, and the Anniversary event may require you to use gems to maximize your progress. So, what am I suggesting? Well, I'd say hold back on a lot of the gem boxes. Even that 6,000 gem box, which gives guild coins, might not be worth it compared to saving for Anniversary and potentially getting some nice rewards. Do make sure, though, if you can, to get the Heroic Scrolls and Profit Orbs, because they will help your progress in Anniversary. As well, with the Campaign Loot Drop event, it may be best to pick up Profit Orbs just so that you have more to maximize your progress at anniversary you can tell a lot of what i'm saying is geared towards anniversary but it is only two weeks away now guys and it's probably going to come on the 12th of june which by the way is my birthday so let's all get ready for celebrations maybe potentially i don't know it's weird having a joint birthday with idol heroes eh. anyway ignore that basically it's going to be pretty fun. And if you want to keep up to date with my event reviews, which I release every Friday, you can subscribe down below. Woo! Also, if you want to catch some more of my content, you can find it over here on the side of the screen. And why don't you drop your comments down below and let me know how you feel about this event. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a great week and happy idling.